today. So today I'm gonna to share with you my time-tested techniques for creating a MySQL database, tying it to a PHP form page, creating a password protected page with a login page. So let's get started. Now, you would have to have some kind of MySQL database. I happen to use cPanel. Now, as a special offer to my subscribers, I'm going to be selling a premium video on how to do everything from A to Z, including e-commerce, for a low fee of $39. Now, that $39 is also going to give you three months of free web hosting. So you'll get free cPanel hosting for three months, so you can use the same exact cPanel that I'm sharing with you here for $39 bucks plus the full video with files and everything else. So that's the subscribers only that can sign up and register for this for 39 bucks for my full in-depth how to build an e-commerce site for $39. Anyway, let's get started. So we need to create a database. So the simplest way to create a database, now to cover a few things here, databases contain Tables, an example of a table, you can have a zip code table, a customer service table, a shipping table. So the way that it breaks down is databases contain tables, tables contain fields, fields, first name, last name, just like a form, first name, last name, how did you hear about us? Those are fields which create records. So the hierarchy is going to be database, database, table, table, Field names, field names create records. So very important step here. Don't confuse database with disabase. Don't confuse this with that. I'm just having fun with you. Anyway, so let's get started here. So we're gonna go to the database section of cPanel. cPanel is a great tool, it enables you to do all kinds of wonderful things to the back end of your web server. Most companies support cPanel. cPanel is a licensing fee. Like I said, for $39, you will get the full tutorial for building a web solution with e-commerce plus free web hosting for three months. So I'm going to click MySQL database wizard. Now, anytime you see the word wizard, that's going to take you through a step-by-step -step process. We're going to select MySQL wizard. Now, important step here, okay? This is a, whether or not it's a hosting plan that's shared or not, the SQL, my SQL database is shared by other users. Now, they don't have access to your database, but let's say I want to create a database that's simply called my store. So if I type in, let's call this my DB store. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, to prevent somebody else from creating a DB store, it gives you the username over here. Now, username followed by my DB store. Now, this is going to be blurred out because I want to protect the username for the account. So, if you're watching this video, this username here is blurred out. Okay, so I'm going to hit next step. Then it's going to say, come up with a username. So we're going to come up with a username for this. So for username, we're just going to call this my user. Password, put a password. Pick a password that's that's highly uh, effective or you can generate a password here. In this particular case, I'm going to generate a password. Okay, that's going to take you to the next screen. So once you put in your username and password, it's going to take you to the next screen. Now from here, we're going to select all privileges. So let's think about this for a second. If you're going to hire somebody that's just going to strictly do that entry, you might want them to simply create records or delete records. So you would simply do this. If you want to just hire somebody for, say, six bucks an hour to simply insert records, you give them these privileges. But since you're the admin for this site, we're going to basically select all privileges. 
and hit next. Okay, now once the database is set up, now important step here, the database is set up, the database is set up, but the database is empty because the database doesn't contain the table yet because we haven't created the tables. So we're going to click home, then we're going to go back to PHP, my admin. So when I click here, this is going to show the available databases that are available to us. So here is my store. I'm going to click my store. Now, very important step here, based on these choices here, my store doesn't have any tables because, duh, we haven't created a table yet. So I said earlier, database contains tables. Tables create fields. Fields create the records. So we're going to simply create a table called admin underscore tbl. Now, this is a good habit to get into. Underscore tbl is the procedurally correct way to create a MySQL database. Underscore table. Then it's going to say how many columns. Columns are also known as field names. How many columns. So let's think about this for a second. We're going to have the admin ID. That's one. Then so we're going to have admin ID date. Person's first name, last name, email account, password, and what I like to do is a personal preference, something called active. This means that the person could active yes or active no. So if you think about this, you had a database of, say, products. Let's say you sold snowmobiles and bathing suits. Well, you're not selling bathing suits during the winter, and you're not selling snowmobiles during the summer. So rather than delete the information, you can just create a field called active and make that product yes or no. It's a much better way to do this. Anytime I create a table, I always include an active field. Active field. So this is going to contain, this is going to contain a total of seven columns, seven fields. I'm going to go. So here's my seven fields, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, except they don't have a name here. So we're going to give them a name. Now the first field should be basically the ID. So we're just going to call this admin underscore ID. You can't use spaces here. This is going to be a small integer. Small integers support six digits, which means I could have one less than a million inside my database, 999,000. So the first column of any table should be the ID set to a small integer, okay, set to auto increment. AI stands for auto increment, not artificial intelligence. And this is going to be a primary key. So very important step here. The first ID for the database should be set to a primary key, which this is. So primary key auto increment, which means the database itself is going to create the numbers for the database. ID 1, ID 2, ID 3, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm going to scroll back here. And the second field is going to be the date. Now, this date field is going to be a timestamp. Timestamp, this way the database itself will automatically insert the time. The time of the server, server time, wherever your server is. So timestamp with a default value of current timestamp. Now what this is going to do for us, the database itself will create the time that the person or the record was created. Then we're going to type in first, as in first name. Now, First name is going to be variable characters. Variable characters is simply alphanumeric. Now, variable with characters, uh, variable characters require a length here. So let's say your users have a very long-winded name from, say, Eastern Europe or something. We're going to give them 45 characters. And same thing with last name. So last name. Variable character set to 45. Okay. Email. Email. Let's say they have an old Earthlink account, which could be very, very long. So we're going to do the same thing. Variable character is going to be set to, say, 45. Now, important step here. I can have many 
Joes, many Harrys, many Sarahs, many Jennifers inside my database, but I don't want to have many people with the same email address. So based on these choices over here to the right, we're going to set the field name. So I have at night D, followed by date, followed by first name, followed by last name. Email address is going to be set to unique, which means I don't want to have more than one person with the same email address. So if you think about this, the database will get very confused if, in fact, you had more than one person with that same email address. So that's set to unique. Okay, password. We're going to say password. We'll give the people up to 12 characters, so variable character, and let's set this to 12. Now, we talked about this before, the active field. The active field is simply going to be active, set to ooh, variable characters. The response for this field is either going to be yes or no, a total of three digits. So variable characters, three, with the default value of as defined. As defined, it's going to be yes. So what that means is by default, when I create a record in Dreamweaver, when I create a record for this table, it's automatically going to increment it, record one, record two, record three. It's automatically going to have a timestamp, and it's automatically going to set the active field equals yes. Now, if you want to add more fields to this here, you can come down here to the bottom right and do that. But in this particular case, we're all set up here. We can just take this, say yes. So important step here, if I want to put more fields here, so as an example, say I want to put a field for photo or a field for admin levels, you can have different levels for administration. So we can come down here and put an X amount of fields, two, three, four, or five. In this particular case, we're going to hit save. Now this can be confusing here. If I hit go, go and pause a new field. We're not going to create a new field column. We're simply going to save this by hitting save. Now, if this is correct, this is going to create a table, which it did. Here's the admin table right here. Okay, so the admin table does not have does not have any content, so therefore I can't browse anything because I have no content. Now, if you made a mistake or typo in here, you could go to structure and you can change the structure of these fields. You can change their type, you can change their settings from here by selecting the field and hitting the edit button. We'll talk about that in the video. Okay. Now in this particular case, I could go to Dreamweaver and create a form for this. But in this particular case, we're just going to have two people inside of our database. We're going to have Jenny Jones and we're going to have Tom Smith. So let's insert a record. I'm going to come up here and select insert. So by default, this wants to insert two records, which works totally fine for us. Now, we don't need to insert the, the uh, record ID because we set it to auto increment. We don't have to set the timestamp because that was set inside of our database. So we're going to type in the person's name. We're going to type in the person's email address, so keep this simple. And we're going to put in a password. Okay, now this email address is totally made up. I'm not even sure the email ex address exists, but it's going to work for database purposes. So we're going to come down here, we're going to type in Tom. Smith, and so this will just be ts at email and password. Okay, now notice that again. Let's just review this. Timestamp automatically puts in the time that the record was created. Auto increment automatically gets ID. So Jenny's going to be one, Tom's going to be two, and their value. Active is going to be set to yes by default because that's what we told the database record to do. So I simply hit go and that creates the two records. 
Now I have two records. Now I have something to browse to. So I can come up here to browse. I can browse those two records. Here's a record for the first record. Here's information for the second record. If you need to change that, you can simply hit the edit button to change that. If you want to delete it, then hit the delete button.